How can a new mayor handle the nuts and bolts of city maintenance, even as marquee projects like rail and a big budget deficit drag finances down? In part two of our interview with Honolulu Mayor-elect Rick Blangiardi, we delve more into health and safety for the island of Oahu. Gina Mangieri reports. Blangiardi has quickly learned the mayor's job isn't always glamorous and that he's ultimately responsible for making sure a big city functions on the big stuff, like public safety, down to every pothole and trash pickup. I asked how he'll get it all done with rail and tax shortfalls mounting and COVID concerns top of the list. The pandemic is a two-headed monster, right? Here we are trying to juggle public health and safety with revving up our economy. So you've, you've got both an economic crisis and a health crisis still going on after so many months. What has been really unsettling is the surge on the mainland and then the possible threats that we could get here. We just can't wait this disease out. Well, we can't wait it out. We can watch the science. Kauai is a bit of a canary in the coal mine. They're seeing that there are some post-arrival positives that sneak through people who came with good faith, that they were negative, locals and visitors alike. What are your thoughts on a post-arrival test for Honolulu and making it mandatory? You know, I, I would be in support of anything that ensures in the psychology of our people safety, because that is the biggest fear. So anything that will help promote that, I'm going to be in favor of at the same time saying if we do that, then maybe perhaps we can start evolving here more as a people's knowing full well this disease is going to be around and around for a long time. Well, pre-COVID, safety to a mayor usually meant public safety. Police, fire, EMS, uh, ocean safety. Now, and also pre-COVID, we were in the midst of a huge crime spike. Yes, Robbery, we violent crime in particular. It's taken a little bit of a pause under COVID. It could always come back. What can you do as mayor to prevent what had been a very quick, quickly escalating trend pre-COVID? Well, I'm encouraged by the attitude of our police department because they've gone through a lot, you know, in this past year with the whole Black Lives Matter, defunding the police, heavy criticism, whatever. But as you said, last fall we had a lot of violence and this year has subsided somewhere. I want to keep our first responders, responders our police, our fire, our, our ocean safety people, our EMS people, all front of line, and just hope that as a people that we will not see this violence again, but should it come up, that we'll deal with the perpetrators of the bad people as quickly as possible. A lot of the job of the mayor is, you're, you're like the top handyman. Yeah. You gotta keep our streets running and our, yes. our trash and our sewers working and our water. And, Boy, we're, we're pretty far behind a lot of the other states on everything from wastewater management to stormwater management and, and what we're doing with our recycling or not doing on all those upkeep kind of things. Well, there's a lot there. There's more than upkeep. There's, they're really, they're all, they're all pretty complicated. You know, I'll tell you how many people have said to me, you know, my job really is gonna range from the menial to the executive and somewhere in there between, if we can, you know, get our parks clean and, and, and pay attention to some infrastructure and get some things done that would just would be so discernible, for, easy for people to see, I think it'll be an important thing. In continuing coverage this week, how the new mayor will approach transparency in the wake of federal investigations of county agencies and staff, where climate and the environment stand on his priority list, and what success in year one for this first-time politician would look like. Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii.